It's a mosaic of cultures, which overlap in several parts of the state and form layers, with the darker layers on the bottom. The cultures are black, Chicano, Southern, Freak, Suburban, and Kicker. Kicker is dominant. Texas is not a civilized place. Texans shoot one another a lot. Different colors and types of Texans do not like one another, nor do they pretend to. <laughs> that was the voice of the late, legendary Texas journalist Molly Ivins. Strong Texas women like Ivins and the colorful characters that live in the Lone Star State and who work in the state government are the subject of a new novel called Mr. Texas, which takes a satirical look into the world of Texas politics. And boy, do we need a laugh today. Joining us now is the book's author, Pulitzer Prize winning writer Lawrence Wright. Lawrence, so this took like 25 years because Mr. Yeah. Texas, before Mr. Texas became a novel, it was a TV series concept, Broadway musical concept, a movie <laughs> script, and now a novel. Tell us about that process, but also the historical figures, the political figures who I inspired Mr. Texas. Well, this started back in the Ann Richards era. Molly was still a, a, a figure in, in Austin and uh, I had the idea that this, the, the characters that inhabit our political world in Texas, or whatever you think of them, they are larger than life. And mm -hmm. oftentimes there's a plausibility problem because they're so crazy that to try to satirize <laughs> them you know, is, is hard to do sometimes. I, I decided I would select the House of Representatives. It's my favorite political body. And I went to see, at that time, it was the Speaker of the House was Pete Laney, a Democrat, and the lieutenant governor uh, was Bob Bullock, also a Democrat, and George Bush became the governor after, after Ann. And uh, so I went in to talk to the speaker, and I said, I you know, had this idea of writing a movie or a television series. He said, it's been the dream of my life to have a television series set in the House of Representatives. <laughs> I said, well, I, here I am. <laughs> you know, it's gone a long way since then, but uh, and it has wound up as a novel. Well, see, we talk about some of the real-life characters. I was just reading through, remembering the one, one you mentioned, Mike Martin. Oh, yeah. Can you tell the story of Mike Martin, part of the inspiration? Yeah, he was a representative from Longview, Texas, and he was, I guess, worried about his re-election chances, so he had his cousins shoot him. <laughs> and it's a, to get the sympathy vote. He said he was shot by the mafia, and which we don't have much of in, in Texas. And then he, the Texas Rangers tracked him down, and he was hiding in his mother's stereo cabinet. And Molly Ivan said he always did want to be the speaker. <laughs> did he win re-election? Did it work? No, it didn't he work. Did, it yeah. didn't work. No. So let's talk about the, the protagonist in, in the novel, Sonny Lamb. Yeah. Who is he? And, I mean, how much of all these real-life characters are, are built into him? Well, there's a little bit of Mr. Smith goes to Washington, but this is Sonny Lamb comes to Austin. He's a rancher in far west Texas out near Marfa. And uh, he has a dream. He wants to be somebody. And he also has this bill that he's hoping to pass, desalination. You know, we have a salty aquifer in a very uh, drought-ridden part of the state. And uh, he's recruited by a lobbyist uh, who has other plans for him. Uh, the lobbyist sees him as his pet vote. And so the clash between these two entities uh, becomes the education of Sonny Lamb about the real world of politics. You know, Lawrence, all of this is in front of your eyes for all of yeah. your years living in Texas. I'm, I'm thinking of things that I've seen in state legislatures like in Massachusetts, the characters, the, the stories. How long did it take you to finally assemble this as a novel? Years, 20 years, 25 years? No, it didn't take that long. Honestly, I mean, they, I've been working on this project for a long time. Yeah. And when I started, Sonny was a Democrat because there were Democrats in Texas back then. But, uh, and, but it's had all these different incarnations. And I uh, you know, started as a movie script and then it became a play and we had a couple of productions of that. And then uh, a Broadway producer came down and said, be a musical. So I started working music. And then she changed her mind and said it should be a television series. So I sold a, 
a pilot to HBO. And, and then I called my agent during the pandemic. I said, what should I do? Podcast. He said, so <laughs> I, finally I thought, wait a minute, wait a minute. I can write a novel. Uh, I know I can get that done. And, uh, but all that long tail that I'm describing, Mike, gave me a, a, a more a, a weapons to use in a novel. I'm thinking about Big Bob Bigby, your Speaker of the yeah. House in this, and I'm thinking about a specific speaker in the Massachusetts legislature years ago, and there was an important bill before the legislature, and he needed, he was a very close vote, and he needed the one specific vote from a fellow yeah. state representative, and he called him up, and he gave him an, an envelope. He said, go back and look at the envelope, and he said, I want you to vote yes. And he had five $100 bills in the envelope. And the guy stood up on the floor after looking at the envelope, asked for a recess. He went, approached the speaker during the recess and said, I, I've got to give this back to you. And the speaker said, well, what is wrong? He said, he said I can't cash those bills in my district. I need smaller bills. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the stories in these legislatures yeah. are just... Uh, I, you know, all the action in politics really is in the states. And yeah. uh, we had a similar situation where a chicken... Uh, magnate Bo Pilgrim walked out on the floor of the state senate and passed out checks for ten thousand dollars on the floor, just out in the, the open. Senate. Yeah, wow. Yeah. Can I can I ask you about a real life? I don't know if character is the right word, but Ken back Ken Paxton, the attorney general, and, and what just happened a few days ago in Texas, where there were articles of impeachment brought up against yeah. him. Some Democrats saying he's the most corrupt politician they'd seen in Texas, which is saying something. Yeah. What were the, what are the dynamic for a national audience kind of tuning into this? What were the dynamics at play there around Paxton? Well, first of all, I want to say how grateful I am to him keeping Texas in the news. While there you I go. <laughs> uh, Ken Paxton was indicted eight years ago on securities fraud, and that has never come to trial. Uh, in many respects, this battle between uh, the House of Representatives, which impeached him with an overwhelming vote, an overwhelming vote of Republicans. Right. Uh, and it goes into the Senate and dies because Ken, uh, Dan Patrick, the lieutenant governor, uh, doesn't like the House of Representatives. And, uh, you know, they don't speak to each other. The House of Representatives doesn't call the Senate, the Senate, they call it the other place. And so uh, during this session in particular, the spat between Dan Patrick and Dade Phelan, the Speaker of the House, became quite personal. So, you know, we no longer have partisan divisions in Texas. We have personal ones. But yeah. on the partisan level, uh, you know, there is a split in the Republican Party. It's, it was really evident in this battle but it's true, you know, in Republican parties and states all over the all over the country. The novel Mr. Texas is out now. Lawrence Wright, thank you very much uh, for coming on the show this morning. Congratulations on the novel. Thank Thanks, you. Always Lawrence. happy to be here. Thank you, guys. Good to see you. <laughs>